In him we... <laughs> now you know the truth. I'm a fraud. You know, some things I can't do. Some things I don't have a talent for. Uh, but I sing and I make joyful noise, Cody. Glory to God. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. All right, guys. It's great to be here in the Phoenix International Christian Church. I am speaking to the fired up Phoenix zealous saints of Phoenix. I'm speaking to the disciples that will change the world for Jesus Christ. If that's you this morning, let me hear you shout amen. amen. If that's you this morning, let me hear you say, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say welcome Rashad Bell from San Francisco. Get up, stand up, bro. Hey, that's a good looking brother right there, y'all. That's a good looking brother right there. You know what I'm saying? They do it right in San Francisco. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to the Phoenix Fire, my brother. I also want to say hello to Jana, of course. Hey, you already know I'm going to call you out. You should know that. That's why she was hiding back there. I'm like, nah, nah, uh uh. Listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. Listen. We love you very much. Very, very much. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for your welcome, King. Incredible way to bring us into the service. That's the way you, you do it in a zealous way, uh, getting us fired up. Incredible, bro. I appreciate and love you so much. Appreciate the battle. Mike, save some for the sermon, bro. Some of y'all greedy. You got to get the greed out of ya. When Jesus brought the... <laughs> hey, you make fun of me all the time. He'd be calling me bald and stuff, so. You know what happened to the young men that called uh, Elijah bald, bro? They were mauled by a bear, bro, and died, so. Stop making fun of me, bro. You're crazy, Stacy. Yeah, I'm your evangelist. Amen. What makes a successful di disciple of Jesus? I get, I get asked all the time, bro, how do you last? Like, this is such an arduous life, Christianity. Being a disciple is so challenging to deny yourself every single day. How do we, how do we, how are we walking with the Lord this long? Hey, can I be real with the church this morning here? It ain't easy. True Christianity, true discipleship of Jesus, it ain't easy. You know Why? Because we're in it. Because we're imperfect people. Because we're emotional. Because we're swayed by what the world has to offer, what other doctrine is. We're, we're swayed here and there. It's like, oh my God, that sounds right. Oh my God, that sounds right. Oh, that makes me feel better. Oh. Stacy coming out like that this morning? Who, who am I talking to this morning here? Man, there's so much. Listen, there's so much going on out in the world right now. I'm getting all jacked up. I mean, this last two weeks, I've been like, we've been dealing with so many fires. It's like, wow, incredible. As I say, more money, more problems. No, Biggie said that. More money, more problems. Guess what? More Christians in the church, more problems. Can I say that again? Like the Bible says, we shouldn't be surprised at all the stuff that is happening to us, right? Some of us are tripping like right now. It's like right now there's a lot going on. And guess what? You might have even sinned last night. You might have even sinned on your way to church this morning. You might have sinned a week. But guess what? You're starting to trip. You're like, oh, my gosh, I am not perfect. Maybe I can't do this. Jesus, you got the wrong person here. Can I preach this morning? Hold up. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only sinner in the Phoenix Church. Maybe I'm the only jacked up person here that needs salvation every day. Certainly not you. Are you with me here? Can I preach this morning? How are you a disciple for so long, bro? How do you make it? How, how do you get through the day for crying out loud? Let's pray to God. God, thank you so much for the time together in the Phoenix Church. We're so grateful to be with some great weather right now. God, you've really uh, given us the peace of this weather here because we know what's coming. 
God, we love you so much. We give our lives to you. God, we're so grateful that you give us breath. We're so grateful that you love us unconditionally, that we feel the warmth of you every morning when we get up and we walk with you. God, you just love us so much. Oh, we're so grateful for that. You are a constant person that we can go to you with perfection, and that's not going to judge us the wrong way, God. You would judge us always righteously. Ugh. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for him dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for saving brothers and sisters like Urel. So grateful that uh, you've taken them out, all of us out of the darkness into your incredible light. We're so grateful for everything you do for us. Be with me as I preach your words. Help us to change and be transformed and do what's right before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What is the answer to the question? I believe that there's three parts to the answer. I believe it's clear eyes, full heart, can't lose. Shout out to Friday Night Lights right there. Shout out to Friday Night Lights right there. Clear eyes, full heart, can't lose. You know, growing up when I was little, you know, we grew up poor. Well, we grew up poor. Couldn't afford the OR. We was poor. Some of y'all can relate. Some of you can't. Some of you had two fa- parents in your family. Good for you. Glory to God. Some of us, you know, grew up with single moms, and we lit a little challenge. You know, I grew up in the house where we had this incredible... Let me tell you, in Bell Gardens, California, incredible, huge, like, console, and there was this huge TV right there. It was this big console TV. It was big with a big back, big TV. You remember that, a big TV? And, of course, that TV didn't work. We used the TV on top, the little one. There was a little TV on top. And, and, and back in the day, you guys, there was no cable TV. See, back in the day at 12 o'clock, the American flag would show up on the TV. They they would do the Pledge of Allegiance, and then static would come on. No more TV. No internet, nothing. That was it, y'all. You want to entertain yourself really and stay played? You got to play Monopoly. Board games. Are you with me here? Some of you can raise. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about because you're spoiled. You're spoiled, y'all. But if if the TV was off at 12 o'clock for some of you kids today, you freak out. Like, I want my MTV. There's nothing on. I need my Netflix. Where's my Netflix? I'm trying to binge here. But man, we grew up with the, with the, the little TV on worked, and we couldn't afford the color, so we had the black and white. And back then, it wasn't digital. There, there'd be little lines in the TV. And you, you get the intel, antenna, and you'd be like. Your family members would say, stay right there, stay right there. You're like. (laughs) And even then, it wasn't that clear. And, of course, back in the day, you were the remote control. Your moms and uncles would tell you, change the channel, mijo. You got to go up. And and we didn't have the little, did you have the little. (laughs) That's how you change the TV. You literally go like that. There was only channel 2, channel 4, channel 5, channel 7, channel 9, 11, and 13. That's it. And that was a lot of channels for us. We're like, wow, so much to choose from. There was not that many. You guys got 100, 200, 300 channels now. And they all were clear. And we couldn't even afford the knob. Our knob broke down. My mom had to use pliers. We had to use these little pliers. Needle nose. It got so bad. You get in there like... High definition is a lot better, amen? amen? I have an incredible TV now. It's awesome. Get to watch the baseball games. It's so clear, 8K. I just put on, like, I just put on, uh, like, the fish, like, this big fish. They have the 8K fish channel on YouTube. I just turned that it on. It's incredible. I'm like, I feel like I'm swimming with fish. <laughs> it's so clear. We've come a long way in technology to make things clear. It's being clear. Clear is nice. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. Point number one, clear eyes. Clear eyes. We're spoiled, man. We got it good, you guys. Technology is inc- Bro, you got TV on your phone, man. Are you with me? I dreamed about the Jets and stuff like this. Like, oh, there's TVs on our phone. Fo- and not just TV. We got cable TV on our phone. Ah, are you with me? You have a little video game nerd right there. You know, Kevin had to say that. Sports, 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 sports. Well, he'd be making fun of us for liking sports. He's a little video game nerd. Yeah. Here we're going to see a miracle of Jesus. 
Jesus heals a blind man at Bethsaida. Mark 8, 22. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. It's so incredible for all of us. If you're visiting today, this scripture is ordained for you. You might have thought your friend brought you here, that you were just going to come to a church service, but God brought you here for you. If you're a disciple of Jesus today, you got out of bed and you made it here, the scripture's for you. You with me here? Oh, I read that before. Well, it's for you today. Amen? Michelle, this is for you today, bro. Can I just say one more thing? At UCI, where he graduated from, they go zot, zot, zot. And at GCU, they go like this, go lopes. It's like, so at GCU, they go like this. At, uh, at, uh, at UCI, they go like this. It's a little UCI humor right there. Verse 22. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hand on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Verse 22, his faith so weak, some people brought him to Jesus. And I say this to you, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. Show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. I'm talking to you, campus. I'm talking to you singles and marrieds. Show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. Bad company corrupts good character. 1 Corinthians 15.33. Sometimes you might be wondering, why am I on this place? Why am I messed up? I go to my friends, they're messed up with me. We in this sin party together. You're going to the wrong people. Why are you getting advice from the wrong people? Are you with me here? You're trying to do better, but you're going to your party friends. Are you with me here? These are some good friends right here. Verse 23, as he's taking him by the hand, leading him out to the village, I wonder what this man was thinking. And I suppose as we go along in the sermon today, as Jesus is grabbing you by your hand today, spiritually, don't trip. I wonder what you're thinking today. Some of us are spiritually blind. Some of us are hurting. And the Lord wants to take us by the hand today and go, let me help you out here today. Are you fired up to be helped this morning here by the Lord himself? Yeah. I wonder what he was thinking. This is the Jesus that I heard about. The one that saves people, that heals them physically. He's walking. Jesus is taking him away. He hears the voice, the, the sandals st- step, stepping on the branches. Is this it? Is this the time I'm going to be healed? Oh, I felt so disappointed so many times in the past. It never happened for me. Is this the time? Will this be the day that I'm finally healed? The scriptures teach that Jesus spit on his eyes. That's nasty. (laughs) For us, right? Like, oh. It's like, Jesus, couldn't you just say, hey, you can see? He could have did that. But Jesus used his mess so you can be blessed. Think about that. He could have done it any way he wanted to. Now, some theologians believe that there's special powers in Jesus' DNA and uh, there's some, some, some medicinal formulas to, to spit and, and saliva. And I don't know, man. Mike, Proto, I don't know, bro. Like, I, I'm not that guy. I can only speculate into what I feel is the truth. The truth is Jesus can do whatever he wanted. And this story is for them at the time, but this story is for us today. Are you with me here? You know, the, the, the scriptures teach that he saw something that looked like trees, indicating that this man's seen before. Because how would he know that he saw trees if he didn't know what a tree looked like to begin with in the first place? So he once could see 
but now he had become blind. Spiritually speaking for us, some of us may have seen and some, had some, some clear eyes, but now there may be some fog in there. Are you with me here? I want to get us to see some trees this morning. Are you with me here? Because only you can do the rest. I'm just trying to get you to see some trees here. Because some of us, as the challenges have been approaching the Phoenix Church, we've been, we've been hiding out a little bit. And sometimes when sin approaches us or there's sin around us or there's sin even uh, in our own lives, guess what we do? We go, we close our eyes. We're like, what do I want to do with that? Maybe it'll just blow over. I don't want to deal with that. And we can actually blind ourselves. You with me here? Some of us may have lost our spiritual sight and have become spiritually blind. It is possible for you to have seen and become blind spiritually. You know, a friend may have even brought you here today. Or you just saw us online and you go, I know the place I should be. I know the good I ought to do and I should be there. You ever been there? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. You ever get up in the morning and go, I don't want to go to church today. I'm tired. It's been a long week. It's been a long week. My boss has been riding me. Things are challenging. The kids are driving me crazy. My husband is not compassionate. My wife is angry with me. Uh, There's a little bit of gas in the car. My finances are going crazy. I don't want to be around the body. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to be a God. I don't want to do it. Wait, hold up. Is it just me again? I forgot. I forgot. I, for, I forgot I'm talking to the, to the saints of the Most High right here. I forgot I'm talking to y'all perfect people here. You ever been there? You ever been like, oh, I don't want to go to Bible talk. I don't go to Bible talk. They better have some good food. Pizza again at campus? Man, when are we going to get some wings up in here? Why only trees? Because you're the only one by faith that can open up and see clearly. Why? Why do he only see trees? Why sometimes can you see some miracles, but you can't see clearly? Why, God, why can't I see things clearly? Why did you make me this way? Why can't I just get it? You ever been there? So-and-so gets it. Keith gets it. Fedez gets it. Michelle Brown certainly gets it. Chandra gets it. Tristan 100% gets it. Why can't I just get it? They're pretty jacked up too, though. That's another, that's another sermon. That's another sermon. Why? Matthew 9, verse 22. This is why. This is a participation relationship with our Lord. It, it takes two to tango, if you will. Are you with me here? Here's Jesus going around. He's raising people from the dead. He's healing people. He's stirring up conflict. He's changing the world for our almighty God in heaven. People are upset with him. And Jesus goes on. He says, Jesus turned to her, saw her. Take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. You see, according to your faith, it will be done. According to your faith, it will be done. Nobody can do this for you. Walking with Jesus, doing the life, being a disciple, nobody can do it for you. You want a great life in Jesus Christ? You want life to the full? It's according to your faith. If you want to barely be making it, escaping from just the flames, it's according to your faith. I don't want to be burned up going to heaven. Ah, I just made it. I'll, I'll take it, but I don't want that. I want, I want God to say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to enter in peace. Are you with me here? Some of us are burning ourselves up, and we don't even need to do that. It's like we're putting all this stuff on ourselves unnecessarily. And, and Jesus is saying here, according to your faith, these things will be done. Who am I talking to this morning? Who am I talking to this morning? See, God doesn't wait to heal you. He does it instantly. You're a decision away from being healed this morning. Amen. Your decision away from seeing clearly this morning. It doesn't take self-help books and years and years of therapy, and, and it, doesn't take, it doesn't take that. It takes your faith going, I'm doing this. 
I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to do this according to what God wants me to do. I'm going to stop being who I am and, and the way I think and, and go, I, I'll, I'm not ready for you, God. You haven't called me yet. To, it's not my time. It, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, not my, it's in God's time. What? what? The Bible teaches today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to pick up your cross. Are you with me here? James 2.14. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Let me tell you something about the illustrations in the Bible. We can come up with the best ones we think, but there ain't nothing like the Bible. What good is it? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. In other words, if you have the means to help, help. There's time to pray for someone, yes? There's time to actually help someone. It really gets on my nerves when I'm not doing well and somebody goes, hey, bro, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm like, well, thank you, bro, but maybe can you take me to the mountain to pray? But maybe can you come over and rebuke my face off or something? Hey, I'm hungry. Let me get you a sandwich, bro. Are you with me here? And I think that in this church here, what we got to do a better job is we got to do a better job of getting to know each other. You with me here? Now, good news, the church is growing, so it's hard to get everybody, amen? Challenging news, though, the challenge for us is, is to get to know each other. The campus should know the marrieds. The marrieds should know the campus. The singles should know everybody, period. Y'all trying to freeload, you know. <laughs> Are you with me here? But we got to be so close. We just know what's going on. It's easier for me to die for somebody if I know them. If I don't know you, it's like, it's hard. Are you with me here? So we've got to get to know each other on a deep love level like Jesus did. Are you with me here? We must be, we must be faithful men and women in action. We have to have clear eyes and focus on the, the purpose that Jesus has called us to do. I'm super proud of Arlene. I, I can't tell you how much and, and how grateful I am of her and her being a soldier of Christ. You know, her heart to do it is right before God. Let me tell you something about Arlene. She's a pretty jacked up person. She's incredibly needy like the rest of us. She needs the Lord with all of her heart. She, she needs God, amen? So do we. She leads a strong group of women. Oh, my God. Woo. I would say, I would challenge anybody to challenge that Bible talk and strength. And she probably has some of the most fun, man. I didn't get to go to Vegas. Oh, they should to invite her Bible... Bible talk to Vegas, y'all. I wanted to go, but amen. But she has a clear, she has clear eyes in her purpose and what she's doing. She knows that seeking and saving the lost, helping others is good for her. What an incredible example we have in Arlene Proto, do we not? The Bible said he saw trees in his spiritual life, truth be told, and now he's seen clearly physically as well. What about you? Has God opened your eyes and even partially? Have you been healed partially? Have your eyes ever even been opened? Do you, do you even know the answer to those questions? My challenge for you guys is to open your eyes. Let the Lord open your eyes today. When you open your eyes from your next nap or your next time you sleep, wake up and go, okay, God, what do you want from me? Help me to see what you want. And here's the deal. When you ask Jesus, Matthew 7, he'll answer you. And when he answers you, be obedient to it. If he tells you to do something, go do it. Are you with me here? If he asks you to share your faith and really get in there with your family, get in there with your family. Have we forgotten our family so much that we don't even share with them anymore? We don't share the goodness of what he's done for us or they're just conversations with our family. You guys with me here? Pray that the Lord will give you vision and follow it. Point number two. Full hearts. Jesus is the bread of life. John 6, 34. We're going to pick it up there. And people did not understand Jesus, guys. Just like today, we can get confused really on who he is. Some people think that Jesus is self-help. I'm coming to Jesus because I need self-help. Self-help. I'm coming to Jesus because I want a better relationship with my family. I'm coming to Jesus because I want better. That is not who Jesus is. 
In fact, Jesus said, I, I have come to bring a sword to divide family. The teachings of Jesus are so sharp, it divides families. That that's not, doesn't seem very right and godly. The principles and the teachings of Jesus are so sharp, it separates families. It separates families even here. People are like, what are you doing to my son? What are you doing to my children? Is this a cult? Don't drink the Kool-Aid. They got stuff in the back. Don't drink it. And here we are trying to change the world for Jesus. Call pe- people to obedience to God. Remember, people don't like to be told what to do. People do not like to be told what to do. And when we interrupt their peace, guess what? We become the enemy. That's not even in my notes. <laughs> John six thirty four. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Wouldn't you want the Lord's bread? You know it's good. You know he fed them some something good, right? And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you, and that you have seen me, and yet do not believe, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Give us this bread always. You know, we wonder if those who traveled across the Sea of Galilee to, to find and meet Jesus were hungry when they had this conversation with Jesus. They wanted the material bread. Jesus miraculously provided, and they wanted it always. Truth be told, when we're hungry, we feel as though food will answer all our problems. Let me say that again. When we're hungry, we feel as though food will answer all our problems. Think about that. Think about that. When you're hungry, you're just like, man, if I just had a Big Mac right now. You could be on a diet, and when you're hungry, you're like, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm going somewhere with this. How does he know? He put a camera in my house? No, because I'm guilty of it too. When I'm hungry, I'm like, oh, if I just can eat. My, my daughter say, Dad, you're hangry. Go get something to eat. It's the same way with almost all our other practical difficulties we find ourselves in. Just as Jesus tried to lift their understanding above their material, physical needs, so we need to have our minds lifted. What they wanted, physical food, he would not give. What he offered, words of life, they would not receive. We could feed people all we want to, physical food, and they'll be fired up. Tamales. Show! They'll be fired up to eat, right? But we, hey, we got the words of life. We got the scripture. We got obedience to God. They're like, eh, no thank you. I've been too hurt to receive that. Your God, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? Oh, Christianity's all messed up. We, they can't get it right. That's what I hear out there. What is sound doctrine? Who has the truth? What is the truth? Why don't you just present the truth to me? We present the truth to you all the time, buddy. You just don't want to listen to it. We present to you to be obedient to God. And guess what? You just don't want it. Because you're sentimental. Because mommy and daddy told you, oh, you're, too, you're, you're spending too much time with your church family. It's just too much. You don't have to do that. You can have your own personal relationship with God. And Jesus told them, guess what? You want to leave me too? Do you want to leave me too? He who comes to me shall never hunger. We're talking about Jesus here. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will not cast out by any means. It's kind of like if, 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 if us, anybody, any one of us, goes to the biggest house that we can find, the, the most expensive with the incredible cars out there, right? And we go to the door and we, can you give us something to eat? 
And to our surprise, the owner opens the door. He goes, come on in. Fix us a great steak dinner or for you vegans, tofu, whatever you like. I don't know. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, oh, whatever. It gets to the chef. The chef cooks up your favorite meal, puts on the game, whatever you like, the nice TV. And you get a massage. Everything, it's incredible. And then he goes, oh, by the way, the cars outside, keep those. As a matter of fact, here's the keys to the house. Keep those. This is all yours. How much more so for God giving to us? That's all temporary. God gives us the eternal. Are you with me here? I'm not going to cast you out. You come to me. I'm not going to cast you out. You want the truth? I'm going to give it to you. In Matthew 11:29, 29, Jesus says, take my yoke, right? Matthew 11:29. 29, just write it down. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus is saying, I know things are tough. I know things are tough. I know you're stressed about bills. Your used car making it to the next destination. I know you're stressed about that. Your taxes, your disability check, unemployment check, Food for the babies. Food and shelter for yourself. Jesus saying, let me take the wheel here. I'll drive this crazy car. You just let me. Too many times we try to take the wheel from ourselves, and every time we try to take the wheel from Jesus, we head for self-destruction. Every single time we try to ride this Christian life and do it ourselves, we head for self-destruction. And then we start to believe the lies of other people, like, Oh, you don't have to do that, bro. You don't have to do that, girl. Why would they tell you to do that? Just come over here. When the truth is sitting right in front of you. The Bible says that some of us, even in this room, are going to go to what our itching ears want to hear. Like, you know what? I don't like what Stacy's preaching. Jesus tells us to give up everything for him. We've got to pick up our cross every day. We've got to deny ourselves every day and walk with him every day. What about me? Don't I have time for me? What do I get? What about me? Beware of what your heart is full of. The world is telling you to put you first. As, as Puerto Rican Mike would say, let's put you first, boo. <laughs> the world is telling you to look out for number one, numero uno. You got to be first. Get yours. You got to get yours. You gotta, you gotta buy your house, the best house you can get. You gotta get the best car you can buy. You gotta have the best TV, the best friends, the best clothes. You gotta look the best. You gotta, you, 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 you. And when you see that homeless person walking on the street, you walk right over them and say, sorry about it. When you see that lost soul out there, you go, sorry about it, I ain't got time for that. When you're persecuted or challenged under your faith, you go, you know, that kind of makes sense. Okay. On the contrary, in Philippians 2, too, the Bible calls us to think of others before ourselves. What kind of society will we live in is if we thought of others before ourselves? In our same attitude, the Bible says we should be like Christ, our servant king. He did not come to be served. He came to serve. Now, I like to be served. It's nice. But that's not why we're here. We're here to serve. Imagine all of us here are just servants. We're trying to serve each other, outserve each other. My wife always tries to outserve me, right? And I got to get up and do something, but she's like always trying to serve. Imagine if we all had servant hearts. You with me here? Utopian society, right? You know, when your heart is full of Jesus, you can overlook an insult. When your heart is full of Jesus, you're quick to forgive. You don't hold grudges. You're truly thinking of others before yourselves. And I believe one way to keep our hearts full is to be in prayer constantly. You know, my wife Lynette, she gets up, no joke, 3 a.m. often to go out to pray for all of us. And she's like, honey, what do you want me to pray for specifically? Not the stuff that we pray for every day, but what else? I'm like, that's my girl right there. You with me here? King says, King's been challenging us for, for, for 14 months to pray for an hour a day. Yeah. It's no wonder why he's growing in his faith, growing spiritually, growing as a man of God, becoming a father. God is entrusting him. Yeah. 
something to be said about praying very powerfully, is it not? We need to have incredible quiet times. You know how I know your faith is weak? Your quiet times are whack. Your prayer life is whack. You know why you're weak? Because you're not getting the bread of life. And that's on period. (laughs) So why am I so weak? Why am I so weak? How come I just don't get it? How's your prayer life? And most of the time you go, oh, it's, it's not that good. How are you doing in God's word? How are you letting God feed you? How are you letting Jesus feed you? Eh, it's not that good. You with me here? My challenge for you guys is don't miss a quiet time this week. Have seven quiet times. Point number three, can't lose. Now, today is the women's NCAA championship. I know, coming from me, that sounds crazy, right? I'm talking about the women's NCAA championship, right? I'll just just share this with you guys, because, you know, I'm Latino, a Mexican man, and some of you sisters are like, he's machismo. He's like, hey, man, I have a little bit of that in me. And I never watched women's NBA in my lifetime, ever, ever. No women's basketball, only when I was cheating from instilling their, uh, their layups for me to coach kids. But here's something I learned. Here's my eyes open, sisters, okay? I've been watching the WNBA. Now, first of all, Angelica's got me into it, and then uh, little Avi, she's got me watching women's basketball, and then the hype is real, and I'm like, let me just check this out. Let me just check these women out, right? Dude. I'm like, holy smoke. Because I used to think I could beat all women. Like, I'll I'll ball them all up, right? I don't even care. I'll ball them all up, right? But that's because I never, because guess what? My eyes weren't clear because I never watched it. I never saw it. I never invested in it. And some of us today, are not, eyes are not clear because we're not invested in it. Some of us are not clear in our relationship with Jesus because we're not invested in it. We haven't looked at it. Bop, 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 bop. Are you with me here? I don't know who's going to win. I don't know who's going to win today. I think South Carolina will win. They're 36-0. and 0. They're 36-0. and 0. They're undefeated. But Caitlin Clark is a, is a shooter. But they got three losses. And uh, they're both number ones going against each other. I don't know who's going to win that. You don't know who's going to win that. You really don't. You don't. You, oh, I know who's going to win. No, you don't. Uh, if you do, let me know. And we'll bet it. We'll make some money for missions. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. For all you at home and want to cut that clip, that was a joke. He said to tell the church to gamble. Give it to missions. See, they're giving to missions from gambling. That might go kill. That might be go. But here's the kicker. We will know what happens at the end of the age. We will know the final score. It should bring us comfort. It should bring us hope. It should bring us peace. We actually know that faithful disciples make it all the way to heaven. Yeah. Revelation 12, 7, the Bible says that war broke out in heaven. Michael and angels, his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. The ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of, of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows his time is short. Woe to us because this is going to be crazy. Woe to us because this is going to be mi vida loca. A warning to the disciples that you will be hard pressed on every side. That the disciples of Jesus have a hard, hard, hard road ahead. And it's only the faithful ones that will see it all the way through. But Jesus said in John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Peace is in Jesus. True peace is in Jesus Christ. And so, yes, challenges in life are real. 
We have challenges with our wives, our husbands, challenges in being single, financial challenges, work challenges, school challenges, children challenges, disciples falling away challenges, people slandering us challenges, people making fun of us challenges, people being us, using us to be misunderstood, being misunderstood for the gospel, fill in the blank challenges. We got them. And guess what? You're exactly where you're supposed to be. You're exactly where God can use you. Take heart. Jesus is with you. Take heart. The promise is real. Jesus is bigger than all of it. A businessman was flying home from his vacation. And he gets into this plane and he gets his good seat and he, he sees a little girl and she's coloring in her crayon book. And they take off and, and, he, and he looks at this, young, this little girl and, and she's just... And as they're about 45 minutes into the flight, the flight hits turbulence. And then the, the, the captain says, please, turn on, please put on your seatbelts. They put on their seatbelts and a little turbulence, more and more. And all of a sudden, the plane starts shaking violently. He looks over, the little girl's just like, no problem. And then all of a sudden, the passengers start praying and like, oh, my God, I didn't get to say goodbye to Susan, my dog, oh, my life, oh, oh. And the man starts to freak out himself. He's like, oh, my gosh, this is it. This is how I'm going to go. He looks at the little girl. She's it's all frantic in the plane. All of a sudden, whew, it gets nice and smooth again. The captain comes on. Some rough, rough turbulence there for a second there, but it's all good now. We'll have you home in about 30 minutes. It's all good from here on out. And the crowd's like, ah, ah, ah. and the little girl's just, and the man's looking at her with great amazement, and he goes, he says, excuse me, um, I noticed that you, you were unfazed, and it was incredible to see you just focus and, and, and coloring your book. How, how are you so brave? She goes, well, my dad's the pilot, and he's flying me home. Wow. You see, when you understand the victory who is flying the plane of your life, Jesus, you just feel a little bit better. Some of us are still trying to fly this plane of ours, this spiritual life of ours. And it's hard. And we got to go, okay, you know what, God, I can't do this anymore. I've been trying. I've been stuck in this. I don't have this real connection with you. I don't know what it is, but it's missing. You with me here? We got to go, you know what, God, you need to handle this. Some of us today in our lives, we say, you know what? Jesus, you are number one in my life. I give you everything. I'm devoted to you. You are Lord. You are Messiah. Jesus, you're number one in my life. Me, I'm number two. I, I'm number two. I'm not worthy of you. Uh, work is, is, is number two. Uh, I give everything to you. Jesus, you're, 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 number, you're number two. Or I'm, number, I'm sorry, I'm number two. Jesus, you're number one. Everything we do, everything I give, I give to you. I, I, I know that you're number one. You are number one. But me, I'm number two. Wow. My life is number two. And here's the kicker. That's what we look like physically when we act like Jesus is Lord. That's where we've been, guys. Some of us have been like putting Jesus as number two in our lives here. It's no wonder why we're going crazy in the storms. It's no wonder why when our, our family uh, persecutes us that we, we bend. It's no wonder why when we see doctrine and we want our, lives, our old life back, we go back to the vomit. It's no wonder why it looks attractive to us. It's because we're not putting Jesus where he belongs. We're not letting him steer. It's no wonder why when we lose a brother or sister, we go, oh, my gosh, the kingdom has fallen apart. When people struggle, we go, oh, my God, the church is not real. That's the same flight I got you, bro. Clear eyes, clear eyes, full hearts can't lose. Hail, hail, line of Judah, let the lion roar. I love you guys very much. <laughs>